Hello and welcome to this segment of Credit Matters TV. I'm John Pykuch on behalf of the Corporate Ratings Team. I'm speaking with Mark Solak, one of our accounting specialists, who has just written a piece called Farewell Discontinued Operations, U.S. Financial Statement Analysis Just Got Harder, which looks at recent changes in financial statement reporting. Um, thank you for joining us, Mark. Thanks, John. So can you tell us a little bit about what has changed, uh, as you talked about in your report? Yeah, sure. As most viewers will know, under U.S. GAAP, companies are required to separately disclose the results of discontinued operations from those of continuing operations on the face of their income statement. Until recently, the threshold for what constituted a discontinued operation was, was fairly low. The benefit of this presentation uh, using this you know, sufficiently low threshold was that companies effectively you know, reflected their continuing operations on a pro forma basis for dis disposal activities. In April of this year, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, or the FASB, uh, released a new accounting standard mm -hmm. which effectively raises the threshold for what constitutes or qualifies as a discontinued operation. Under that new standard, only those disposed components or components held for sale that represent a strategic change, a st strategic shift that have or will have a major effect on operations or financial results will qualify for discontinued, discontinued operations treatment. Examples given in the standard as to what constitutes a strategic change include the disposition of a major geographical area or a, 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 the, uh, a major line of business, all of which is open to interpretation. This new threshold will reduce the number of disposals that qualify for discontinued operations treatment, leaving the result, potentially leaving the results of material disposals within continuing operations. While it's difficult to exactly you know, demonstrate uh, or anticipate what the impact to U.S. companies will be, uh, we can look to IFRS examples uh, to, as an indicator because the new U.S. GAAP threshold virtually converges with the existing IFRS threshold. And, and in the article, we give the example of Anheuser-Busch InBev from 2009 uh, to, to demonstrate what may be the, the potential impacts under U.S. GAAP. Okay. And so what are the analytical implications of this change? As I mentioned earlier, the benefit to, to separately reporting discontinued operations from continuing operations is that uh, you know, companies effectively pro forma their results for disposal activities. Under the new standard, the continuing operations may be uh, convoluted by the results of material dispositions. Um, this will likely make forecasting by analysts and investors that much more difficult because these you know, historical financial results generally is the starting point for forecasting. Uh, additionally, the uh, trend analysis will probably be made more difficult if continuing operations is, is apples to oranges when disposed, the results of disposed businesses remain in continuing operations in comparative periods. Okay. And so what should investors be on the lookout for? Yeah. Adoption of the new standard is not required for public companies until uh, reporting periods beginning after December 15th, 2014, which means tw uh, fiscal year 2015 for, for calendar year companies. Um, but, however, uh, early adoption is permitted. And, in fact, we've already seen a number of companies adopt it in their first quarter 10Q. Uh, investors and analysts should be mindful of this, of this change and review a company's account disclosed accounting policies carefully mm -hmm. to determine if they, a company has adopted yet or not. Once adopted, investors and analysts can, uh, should anticipate having to do more legwork to account for the effect of disposals on the historical results. And while the, the uh, the standard requires additional disclosures. We don't think those additional disclosures make up for the lost transparency on the face of the income statement. So investors or analysts will have to rely upon company management to electively provide this additional information to arrive at you know, uh, ongoing run rates. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for that update. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. And on behalf of Standard & Poor's, I'm John Pykuch.